When we are given an algebra word problem, there is a series of steps that we should do if we want to be able to get the right answer and get full marks for showing our work. Step 1, define the variables. Step 2, create the equation. Step 3, solve the equation. And step 4, state the answer applying the appropriate unit of measure. In example 1, if I add 7 to my age and divide the answer by 4, I get 8 as a result. What is my age? The first step is to define the variables. So we say, let x equal, and we define our variable. Usually, the question at the end tells you what you need to define your variable as. So what is my age means let x equal my age. Defining the variable helps us see what we're doing when we're building our equation. It makes the next step easier. Step 2, create the equation. Interpreting this problem, if I add 7 to my age, that means I am saying x plus 7, my age plus 7. And divide by the answer by 4, well that means I can take this expression and divide it by 4. I get 8 as a result means I need an equal sign, and this is equal to 8. Now it's time to do algebra to solve our equation, step 3. Since my algebraic expression is being divided by 4, I multiply both sides by 4. And this allows me to cancel the 4's over here. My equation has now become x plus 7 is equal to 8 times 4, which is 32. Now I just have to move the 7 to the other side of the equals. x equals 32 minus 7, and I know my answer, x is 25. Then I state the answer with the unit of measure, step 4, I am 25 years old. This series of steps can help us get full marks on algebra word problems. In this second example, Three consecutive odd numbers total 159. What are they? Step one, if you'll remember, is define the variables. I'm going to make x equal to the smallest of the three numbers. When you have to define a variable to find more than one answer, a good idea is to always make x equal to the smallest of the answers. The next consecutive odd number would be arrived at by adding 2 to the smallest number. Remember, we're doing consecutive odd numbers, not just consecutive numbers. Odd numbers go up by 2's. So, x plus 2 equals the next number. And since we're looking for three consecutive odd numbers, I have to define x plus 4 is equal to the last of the three numbers, or the largest of the three numbers. Now I can make my equation. That's step two in our process. Totaling 159 means we're adding them together. So we take the smallest number, we add to it, the next number, and we add to that the largest number, which is x plus x plus 2 plus x plus 4, as I've defined them, equals the total 159. Now let's do the algebra to solve this. x plus x plus x is 3x. 2 plus 4 is 6. Now I'm going to move the 6 to the other side of the equals. 159 minus 6 is 153, so 3x equals 153. If I divide both sides of my equation by 3, these 3's cancel, my x is isolated, and 153 divided by 3 is equal to 51. That means my smallest number is equal to 51. x plus 2, the next number, will be 1, will, uh, 3, 2, 1, x plus 2, the next number will be equal to 51 plus 2, will be equal to 53, 
and x plus 4, the largest number, will be equal to 51 plus 4, it will be equal to 55. We have solved the equation, which is step 3 in our process, and step 4 in our process is to give the answer with unit of measure, the numbers are 51, 53, and 55. And we do not have to use a unit of measure because numbers do not have a unit of measure. This is how you use the four basic steps of solving algebra word problems.